And you know sometimes we, if we size up people, we won't witness to them. We don't remember that if people look like they are in bad, bad shape, remember God loves them. And he has a lot of grace to help them. church um, I went witnessing yesterday because I didn't want a Holy Ghost whipping so I know he'd been telling me for years you need to witness and I was just like you know I'm no good at that and blah 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 excuses excuses and so I hadn't been witnessing in a while so I was kind of terrified and I was trying to be brave but I was just like oh my god I'm going to the projects <laughs> These people look crazy, and they're going to shoot us, and all, I, just all kind of fears, you know, they're going to slam the door in your face, they're going to curse you out, and, and none of that happened. Uh, but, you know, the enemy always makes it like a big deal. So I went, I was like, I know I have to go, because I, I just don't want that on my conscience. I don't want to stand before him, and he's like, I told you to witness, and you were just full of excuses. So I went, and um, we knocked doors. And the thing that I was kind of relieved about was if they don't want to hear from you, they're just not going to come to the door. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about, you know, them like, they just didn't come to the door. There were several doors. They, they, they were in there, but they just didn't answer. So I was like, that's cool. So we just kept it rolling. And, but uh, most of the doors we went to, the people were open to prayer. I don't know if they thought we were Jehovah's Witnesses, but we introduced ourselves. We told them we were from church. And about 90% of the people um, agreed to pray, to prayer. And so that's what we did. We were, I got their names, and I said, well, can I pray with you? And we did that, and the Lord started speaking to me about the people as I was praying. It was phenomenal. So I, I told one, cup, one couple was cooking, and so he was like, I'm eating. I said, well, we could pray while you eat. You eat. We're we going to stand right here and pray. And it was just amazing. They invited us in. We prayed. The Lord gave me a word for them. The wife was blessed. She was like, oh, I feel something. It was just so, <laughs> it's just amazing to see the Lord touch people. And he will use anybody who goes who makes themselves available. So I was just encouraged. I wrote down the names of all the people we prayed with. I'm going to continue to pray for them. And so whatever um, inhibitions you have, just go and the Lord will meet you there because you're being obedient to his word. So it was a blessing. Amen. Amen. Very good. Very good. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for them that uh, the others that were out too as well. And uh, that I just picked a couple. And um, thank you all for going and for those that are be going this Saturday and the next Saturday and, and the next Saturday. Praise the Lord. Um, the Great Commission is very, very important. That's one of the priorities uh, in the mind of God. Go you into all the world and proclaim the good news. Because just like we got saved, God want to save others. But they need to hear. They need a messenger to come. And uh, as we go in faith, then God will honor it as you see what happened yesterday. We had a situation where I worked by myself because we didn't have exactly six. And um, so I went and knocked doors. And um, the day before, God was saying to me, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. So when I, I, I was reminded, so when we run into a situation that looks very difficult, then there's more grace to help them. And so anyway, I was in a situation, uh, I... I couple of things that happened there I won't go into detail but um, one lady was really carrying on 
and I could hear her outside. She just had some issues with her family members and whoever she was talking to. And uh, so she was quite loud, and I could hear through the door. So then he brought back to me where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. And uh, so I knocked on the door and everything, and then uh, he said, who is it? I said, Pastor Heron. So she just calmed down, became just like a little kitten. <laughs> she came to the door and just was so respectful. And you know, sometimes we, if we size up people, we won't witness to them. We don't remember that if people look like they are in bad, bad shape, remember God loves them. And he has a lot of grace to help them. And so remember that. And then the, uh, the other thing I want to say before we go right into the word was this. Uh, the last young lady that I ministered, she was 38. And uh, she stood through the door and talked. And I told her I wanted to share Christ with her. I told her that we were this ministry that was normally out in the field every year. This past year we weren't, this summer. But, and uh, so some remembered. I went to the first door and she said, oh, so you were out in the field? I said, yep. And um, so that just kind of uh, put a little uh, piece there. But this one did not. And so to make a long story short, I asked if I could share Jesus, share the good news about God. So she said, yeah. So I began to talk to her. We began to explain to her, and it just about, took about seven minutes from the beginning of how sin came about and all this stuff. And so as I started sharing, she was on the phone, had a dad on the phone who was in Roanoke, Virginia. And she said, Dad, are you listening? Can you hear? So I looked, and there he was on the phone. I said, oh, my. So she said, okay, you can go ahead. And uh, so I continued sharing the brief uh, version of God coming into the world to save sinners and so on. And at the end, I asked if she wanted to accept Jesus. She said, yes. I asked her dad. I said, do you want to accept him? He said, yes. Wow. So both of them, I led them to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, that was a blessing, you know, and it just blessed me. You know, you... People want something. They want security in the days and time that we're living in. And when we go and share Jesus Christ, somebody's going to get saved. So I just want to encourage you, please sign up. And uh, if you're afraid, then they spoke to that today. And if there's other misconceptions, they spoke to that also. So let's do what we need to do. do. Remember, that's priority in the heart and the mind of God. Yes. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Young people. Oh, it's very good. Young people, if you're saved, plan to get out there. It blesses other young people to see somebody taking a stand for Jesus. It's very important. So um, I'm looking to uh, just tell to, uh, Toyika and uh, we want to make sure that those that go to have some um, body that's been experienced in um, sharing the good news. All right. Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay. Now, I want to say here that this is what the Lord laid on my heart once a month, once a month, to have a deliverance session. Once a month, one service out of the month, one meeting, of course, to have a deliverance service. That's where people get delivered from strongholds and from demonic powers that has been hindering their lives. God want to do that. So uh, this is not something that I'm, I'm anxious and want to uh, just take on my own. I got enough responsibilities, <laughs> but I heard the voice of God. And I know that it's very important to obey God. So if you have been... Uh, if any of these areas, and there are others, but these are some that he just kind of quickened me while I was in his presence there, just thinking about it. Those who have difficulty submitting to God or submitting to leadership, if you, in your mind, it just, just 
challenges your mind. It could, it could be a root cause somewhere else. Or it could be a need to be delivered. That's the one. Number two, those who battle with thoughts of suicide, you need for God to bring some deliverance. Number three, those who suffer with chronic sickness and pain in your body, it may be a cause where you need deliverance. Number four, those who suffer with habits, addictions, such as pornography, drugs, alcohol, etc. Chances are you need some deliverance. God wants to deliver you. He doesn't want you to just go to church, right? God wants to free us up so that we can be Christ-like in our disposition. This is the goal of salvation on the earth is to become Christ-like. And uh, once that happens, of course, then we become more effective witnesses. Number five, those who suffer with bondage in the emotional realm, fear, anger, hate, bitterness, rage, etc., unforgiveness. Those who suffer in the emotional realm over a period of time, that could be an indication where you need some deliverance. You don't have to think bad about it. You just need to show that you really want to be free by responding, right? Then finally, uh, those who struggle with sinful practices, adultery, fornication, lust, gambling, cursing, etc. Those, uh, just a few of the many sinful practices. And uh, you may need deliverance from us. Spirits of sin. The spirits, the spirits of all kind. And I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, here on the uh, air, but uh, I just wanted to mention those are a few things that um, sort of came to my mind while I was in prayer. God, those areas where uh, God wants to free people from. Remember, the goal as, uh, uh, for the Christian here is to become Christ like. God is good, and the fruits of life, the fruits uh, of righteousness, is what uh, God wants out of us. Every one of our lives, bar none. So, I want to put that before you. Please don't forget to sign up. Now, don't stay away and not do it. Or, if, But just remember, and we're going to have a session tonight. And we're not going to have one till next month or sometime. But we're going to have a deliverance meeting. And it's going to be at the Wyndham uh, in Chesapeake Greenbrier area. Those of that had the class, took the class, and, and uh, in the prophet school, you know where that is. Um, but it's in Wyndham and Chesapeake. So now if you, uh, you may not necessarily fit in any of those categories, and you may say, well, uh, but I do know somebody that I know they really need some special help. Bring them. Care for them, Right. Show some care. You know how the four men brought this man that was in a bed in the Bible days. He needed healing. They didn't need healing, but he needed healing. So the four of them took him to Jesus, and they brought uh, the man. God met the man. So show some love. Show some care. If you know somebody else that's struggling, and they need to be free, would you do that? Come on, let's give God a praise. Amen. All right. So once again, seven. We're going to meet at seven. So please. And I'm looking for my daughters and uh, to be, in, be intercessors. I know they might have planned not to come, but we need your prayers for the deliverance time like that. When we're praying for people, we need intercessors, right? We need people that's going to pray so that the power of Jesus can flow. All right. Seven o'clock. Mm-hmm. Okay, now let's go to the book of Colossians. Thank you for listening. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. When you found it, please stand with me. You know, try to take my time and briefly communicate. 
And when you found it, say amen. All right, beginning at verse 9, we're going to read down through 18. And let's read responsibly. Verse 9 says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he's before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head head of of the body, body, the church, church, who is the the beginning, beginning, the firstborn firstborn from the the dead, dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Praise God. Father, thank you for this word of God. We realize, Lord, that uh, you are excited about helping us. And we are excited about you caring for us. When we cannot care adequately for our own selves, we thank you for the healings that shall take place by way of TV. We thank you, Lord God. For the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, take control and minister life, 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 and wholeness in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give the glory and the honor to you for it's rightfully yours. This we ask in Jesus' name and everybody said, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. All right, I'm going to... Um, if I can uh, watch my time it won't be too long um, look at Colossians 1 9 and 10 again a little closer I'm going to read 9 and then 10a focus there initially for this cause this is Paul after he heard um, verse 4 since We heard of your faith in Christ and of the love which you have to all the saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven where have you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel which is coming to you as it is in all the world and brings forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard it and knew the grace of God in truth. He says for this cause After Ephesus gave the report concerning their lives. For this cause, verse 9, verse nine we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy of the Lord. And to all pleasing. I want to pause there. Thank God for Bishop and Sister Bush there. I fail to acknowledge it. It's so good to have them in, in the house among us here. Praise God. Now, this caught my attention. Paul said, for this cause. You heard of their faith, their love. Ephesus uh, obviously was the founder maybe uh, of the, for that group. And uh, so he began to declare to Paul their love and uh, praying earnestly and fervently for them. And, uh, and Paul, th- there are other places that others won people to the Lord, but Paul was like an overseer, like an ap- apostle, if, you know. And, and so they would come because he was one of the chief apostles at the time. 
and things began to go on in the churches and whatever, then they would, would get with Paul because he was well known and then Paul would give his instructions and, uh, to help the church. And here was a situation with Colossae. Obviously he didn't found the church. Uh, but he showed his love and care for them. Just so powerful, you know. For this cause, verse 9, we also since the day we heard it. Do not cease to pray for you and to the desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, God's will. And all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Uh, that you might walk worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing him. So this is, Paul knew that this was God's desire. And so he... Uh, somehow or another, God impressed upon Paul what God's desire was for his church, right? And so Paul began to, when he heard about him, the young church, and he writes to them and telling them, and he was incarcerated at the time, so he had some time. And he began to write to them, uh, telling them, I've been, from the time that I heard about you, I began to just pray for you. And to pray that God would give you a full knowledge of his will. Not only to know his will, but to have spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding. Right? That's important because just to know God's will does not mean that you're going to do anything about it. Right? And uh, remember in the days uh, of Israel... When Israel were delivered, deliverance came first. So they were delivered, delivered from Egyptian bondage, which is a type of deliverance from sin, right? And so after they were delivered, God called them, uh, and then Leviticus, God began to tell Moses how to teach the people to serve him, Right? So in the same way, when we get saved, it is important that we know how to serve and please God. Right? Okay, so uh, here Paul, that was his, his desire for any new church, any believer, he wanted them to understand the importance of knowing how to please God and serve God. And so that uh, not only the knowledge, but the wisdom and the understanding had to, uh, uh, in order to do something. So, you know, you can, you can know something but not have the wisdom to carry it out, right? So Paul said in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now, so as I was looking at that, uh, <clears throat> he took me to uh, two scriptures. One was found in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. He says... I, verse 1, therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Well, how you, how Paul? With all what? Lowliness and meekness with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. So you see this bearing Christ like fruits, right? You see lowliness and meekness with long suffering. So there's a certain uh, there's a certain character that must come with being a child of God and walking to please God. So Paul says to the church of Ephesus, I want you to walk worthy of this calling. We've been called to a holy calling, right? And so if since we've been called to a holy calling, there is a holy walk to go with this calling. And so here he spells it right out. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing or bearing with one another. All right? Now we go back to Colossians, Paul said, he says again, repeating, that when I, since I heard about your faith and your love for the saints, I began to pray this prayer for you, that you might be filled with the knowledge 
of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So we see a part of spiritual wisdom is going to be meekness and humility, right? All right, let me go back to another one. I want you to turn with me to the book of James. James chapter 3. Are you there? Start at verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation or conduct or lifestyle his works with what? Meekness that comes from wisdom or meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, somebody say heart, boast not, glory not, and lie not against truth. Why? Because this wisdom does not come from above. But is earthly, sensual, devilish. Nobody wants that, right? Now, that's what he says. So that means when there are issues in the heart ram, we want to get rid of them, right? We want to get rid of them because we cannot display divine wisdom properly. Make sense? Because in the heart realm, that which benefits demons, they're not going to let you go right easy, right? Uh, they want to, uh, to be boss. Uh, thank you, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Earthly wisdom originates from man and has only an earthly perspective. Are you with me? Sensual here means natural or Belonging to the soul. Soulish, right? It originates in the mind, somebody say mind, and stands in contrast to the wisdom of God. Are oh, you hearing me? That's why he said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, right? Because any other mind may get us into some trouble, right? <laughs> he said on another thing, occasion, mind not high things, right? But condescend to men of low degree. I saw your case. 